If you don't know that The Simpsons has some ability to see into the future, then you've not been in tune with what is going on. Who knows what is going on behind the scenes with this show? It might be run by some sort of time lord from the future who wants to give us hints about what is going to happen through a very popular TV show. Or maybe there's a rift in time and space that is in The Simpsons writing office and it taps into the writers' minds without them knowing. So their ideas for the show are actually coming from the future and we are un knowingly watching visions of the future on a scripted show that kind of lost its luster 10 years ago but still sticks around as some good comfort food. Or maybe if you have a show running for almost 30 years you touch on so many topics that it is impossible not to predict the future. You literally write about every outcome of the future so eventually one of them has to be true. If we look at all the predictions maybe their success rate isn't that high. No matter what the reasoning is we are going to find out the answer. I'm your host Jade Reyna. And on today's Life's Biggest Questions, we are going to be asking the question, who is behind The Simpsons predicting the future? Okay, let's start off by explaining what this is all about. The Simpsons has a knack for making episodes that are eerily close to things that happen way after the episodes air. Here are a few examples. In episode 2 of season 9, we saw an image of the beautiful statue of David with pants on, which seems very bonkers. Why would anyone think it's a good idea to deface art with a pair of Levi's? Well, in the middle of St. Petersburg stood a mimic of the statue of David, and for an unknown reason, people voted on whether or not the statue should be wearing clothes or not. I guess they didn't want little kids to see David's little wiener. It's art, people. A penis can't hurt you. In 1993, there was an episode where the Simpsons version of the Las Vegas performance Sink, Reed, and Royd were attacked by their gorgeous tiger. Then, of course, there was the devastating event in 2003 when Roy was attacked by the tiger that they performed with for years. Now, guessing that a massive tiger would one day attack its owner isn't a long stretch, and it's a joke that people had been making for a very long time. But there was even an episode where they looked into the future, and Lisa Simpson was president, and the former president was Donald Trump, and this episode came out 16 years before Trump was ever elected. There has to be something in the water over there at Simpsons HQ. We should get all of those guys to stop writing an animated sitcom and get them to start working as precogs like a minority report. I want to know what crime is going to happen before it happens. Also, if you could get them to tell me what the next flavor of Krispy Kreme donut is going to be, that would be great. Stopping crime comes first, but knowing what the next delicious treat is comes a close second. But if we're really going to get into it. I mean, if you guys want me to give you the most blunt and obvious answer, then it comes down to math. There is no secret group of all-knowing wizards that have decided to work as Simpson writers. How many episodes of The Simpsons has there been? At the time of this recording, there has been 673. That is a ton of content. Any writer would dream of creating a show that has that kind of legs. Now, when you're writing a show, even though each episode will have a main storyline, there is usually a B and C plot and sometimes even a D plot depending on how deep the episode will go. Now, The Simpsons is a show that is constantly doing social commentary and episodes air a year after they are written. They need to think about what the global climate might look like a year into the future. And with at least three plots every episode, that is 2019 guesses at the future. And the number might be even higher if we include all the D plots. So when you get some of the greatest writing minds together in a room, some from Harvard and other prestigious colleges, you ask them about the future and they get 2019 guesses at what what might happen, if they were to get 20 to 30 right, that's actually not that impressive. Think about it in any other context. If you were doing sports predictions and you were guessing about which teams would win which games and you got 25 right out of 2,000 games, you would probably be fired. So in the end, it's just a numbers game, nothing less, nothing more. I know some of you out there are thinking, no way, man, they tapped into something, I just know it. Well, you can keep believing that, I'm not gonna stop you. But with all this being said, it doesn't take away from how amazing the show is. The Simpsons, even though it hasn't been held in the highest regard in the most recent years, has been the voice of a generation and the centerpiece of some of the best television ever made. I'm part of the crew that argues the first 10 seasons can stand up to any show ever and will be looked back on as some of the best television in history. So having the ability to predict the future or not doesn't really matter. Well, that is the logical answer at least, but over here at Life's Biggest Question, we like to speculate on things that are a little bit crazier. So let's say it wasn't all math. What if there was something deeper going on? Well, here are some of my favorite conspiracy theories as to why the show is able to have the ability of true sight. 
First being that the show has an amazing cast of writers. Some people like Al Jean, Mike Reese, and Conan O'Brien, many of these guys attended Ivy League schools, and people always connect Ivy League schools with the Illuminati, the Freemasons, and many other secret rich people organizations. So some people think that The Simpsons is a tool that rich people use to communicate to each other and the shadow government. You put an episode about the NSA listening to people through their phones, you can't tell people over the phone, obviously, because they would be listening to you through the phone. Then all your global elite buddies know not to use their phones, and you can keep gathering information in the shadows. A communication tool for the rich and powerful is a fun idea, but I don't think it would be a very useful one. It takes a long time for episodes to be written, scripted, animated, and edited. I don't think it would be very useful for the most powerful and evil people in the world to get their information out that way. Honestly, I think it would just be better to have everyone on a mailing list or have a group meeting or something like that. I don't know. It's just anything would be better. That brings me to my second conspiracy theory, that the show is run by aliens who want to control us. This theory suggests that the show isn't so much The Simpsons predicting the future, but that they are creating it. Through the influence of a very popular show, they can get into the heads of millions of people and get them to do their bidding, influencing what they want the future to look like and making it into a reality through the very people who watch the show. Dum dum dum. This theory goes hand in hand with all those other predictions that the government is secretly run by a race of lizard people. Or maybe it would be more similar to the Kang and Kodo characters that we have seen on the show, with one massive eye and perpetual drool. And we can get into some Simpsons conspiracy inception with the episode Treehouse of Horror 7 where Kang and Kodo run for president. Could this be our alien overlords taunting us, or could this really just be a show? Well, it's just a show. I'm just exploring this madness for you because it's fun. And my final final conspiracy theory on who is behind The Simpsons predicting the future is that the creator, Matt Groening, is a time traveler from the future. It would be easy to predict the future if you had already seen it all happen. And there is more backing this idea than the sole fact that the show has been able to predict the future a handful of times. If Matt Groening was from the future, he would know how to make the right moves to get the show on the air and turn it into a massive success. People who believe in this theory say that in his timeline there was a show very similar to The Simpsons. Maybe even exactly the same, but it lacked something and then it was cancelled and disappeared. Matt saw that the one piece that the show was missing was social commentary. He then took his information, went back in time, and made the most successful show of all time and became a millionaire. And he also looks like a genius because he is the brainchild behind a show that can see through space and time. I still believe the alien one a little bit more than this one. Well, I believe the math one more than all of them because it's the only logical answer. But this is life's biggest questions. We like to get weird. Now that we've gone through all this madness and have broken down some of my favorite theories of what is going on with The Simpsons, let's dive into some comments from my last video, How to Build a Doomsday Bunker. Little Herc wrote, what if there was an earthquake and it broke the ground around your bunker? Does it just fall? Well, here's the thing, Little Herc. I don't have that knowledge or experience. I have no idea what would happen at all. I think if we were forced to live in an underground doomsday bunker and then an earthquake hit, the sweet escape of death might be welcomed. The real Spider Mew wrote, Dungeons and Dragons, books, and spare paper and pencils. That's the way you shelter with your mates and make your own stories and work on team building at the same time. This is the stuff I like to see, man. That's an amazing way to spend the apocalypse. You don't need to pay attention to the world burning around you. Build your own world full of magic and friends waiting for all the horrible things to blow over. And that usually works. I don't know. We've never been there before. We will see. Maybe soon. <laughs> well, that is all I have for you on today's life biggest questions. Make sure you guys hit up the comment section and let me know what you think about The Simpsons' ability to predict the future. Make sure you guys leave the most outlandish comments possible. I tend to like the crazier theories, so if you leave behind a crazier idea, I might read it out on a future episode. And make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. I've been your host, Che Arena, and I'm here to answer all your questions.